Hello everyone, and welcome to week 42 for Xur. Sorry about the lack of videos this week, but with me being sick and just being exhausted from E3 and the previous weeks before it, I just needed to take a little breather. Videos will be starting back up very, very soon. Xur is over by the Quartermasters, the Vanguard Quartermasters, with a pretty decent inventory. Starting from the bottom, we have Fusion Rifle, Machine Gun, and Rocket Launcher telemetries to level up those weapons faster, Plasma Drive, and Emerald Coil for those rare blue quality sparrows, five heavy ammo packs for one strange coin, and one mode of light for two strange coins. Titans, you are getting the Peregrine Greaves, new with the House of Wolves with a pretty good stat roll of 152 intellect. Comes with more heavy ammo, that should not come as a surprise, that's a pretty standard bonus on boots. The main bonus is where your shoulder charge deals bonus damage if activated in the air. Now, for my preliminary review of these boots, I said that I didn't think these were going to be useful because bonus damage with regards to anything Destiny tends to be on the weak side. That being said, the Greaves boost shoulder charge damage to three times the normal amount while connecting in the air, which is a very considerable boost. Considerable boost, if I could speak. In PvP, this basically kills nearly any target, regardless of their shields, damage reduction, you name it. I think the only thing that it won't kill is an Eternal Warrior Titan in Mid-Fist of Havoc, or maybe an Armor of Light, Ward of Dawn, Defender Titan. All that being said, are these going to be worth your exotic slot? I'm still going to say probably not. For anything that you need to take serious in PvE, first of all, you're going to be a Defender Titan. This requires you to be a Striker Titan, which are easily not as good. In PvP, I don't see myself using these over the Armamentarium. Yes, they are a counter to shoulder charging a Warlock wearing the Ram. Yes, they are a counter to shoulder charging targets who are mid-super. But... I personally value having something like double grenades way more than something like a boosted shoulder charge because I use shoulder charge way less than I do my grenades. Yeah, for PvE, they're fun to screw around with, doing six times the damage on an arc burn nightfall or whatever, and I'm sure I'll screw around with them. But when it times, when it comes time to get serious, for whatever reason, these are going to be back home in my closet. They're better than the standasides, that's for sure, but I don't think they're good enough to break into the mainstream. I'd say these are a pass as a first exotic, but obviously collectors should pick them up as this is the first time that they've been on sale. We'll be grabbing them for less than typical reasons. Hunters. You get the Crest of Alpha Lupi, your Keeper of the Pack, Fast Res Exotic. 158 strength is above average for a chest, but nothing in the main. I believe that all players should eventually have their Keeper of the Pack exotic at some point, as they're all relatively good. They've becoming, they have been becoming very popular in Trials of Osiris over the past few weeks, especially with Hunters having somewhat weak 3v3 PvP exotics. They don't have something like the Ram, Armamentarium, Vord Voidfang Vestments, although I guess you could very easily include Lucky Raspberry in that list without much problem. Still, all players should have their Keeper of the Pack exotic at some point, and if you have some spare coins, you should grab this. Warlocks. You are getting the previously evasive Heart of the Practic Fire. 152 Discipline is slightly above average for a chest stat roll. Comes with more fusion rifle ammo, eh, more heavy ammo, that's good. Now long-term viewers will know that Heart of the Praxic Fire isn't exactly as effective as it seems, only granting one additional grenade during your Radiance if you're spamming them at maximum speed for basically all levels of discipline. While, yes, melee is included in this equation as well, you tend to use grenades significantly more when using Radiance. For PvP, I'm not using these over something like the Ram, Voidfang Vestments, nothing monocles. I think those items bring much more of a benefit, even something like Voidfang Vestments, over this, even though you're a Sunsinger. For PvE, well, it's not like you have a lot of options as a Sunsinger. I mean, you do have options. You have Starfire Protocols, Sunbreakers, Claws of Ahamkara, these, and Purifier Robes. But all of those are pretty mediocre when it comes to PvE, let's be honest. I imagine a hot pick right now are the Purifier Robes because of Prison of Elders, but still, everything is pretty mediocre. 
If you wanted to skip on these, I wouldn't blame you. They're not bad or anything. It's not like the alternates are that great either. The weapon of the week is Red Death, the Pulse Rifle. This is a fantastic weapon for PvP and definitely works well in PvE. The bonuses are very much suited to keeping you alive and on target. It is one of the, if not the only counter to Thorn's damage over time. It is capable of killing in two bursts in PvP, putting it moderately up there with regards to time to kill, and the health regeneration after every PvP kill, and after every kill, is pretty useful. It's pretty, pretty useful. In PvE, it performs pretty well as a pulse rifle, and it'll keep you alive, although there are certainly better options for your primary weapon slot. Still, this is a great weapon to have, comes very recommended, especially for those looking there for their first exotic. The engram of the week is the helm, so those looking for the ram, obsidian mine, saint 14, symbiote, nighthawk, or mask of the third man should take a gamble, a lot of good helms to find. That is going to do it for me and for Zer for week 42. Have a great weekend, everybody, and I will see you all next time.